we're going to some acid music, or should I say some jungle is? Oh, mate. Tune in 3 till 6 in the morning. And you can see... The sounds of the chilling 102.9. As you mix it down, it's the weekend rush. Rush FM is one of five pirate radio stations broadcasting from a 60s tower block council estate in Hackney. With a range as far as South End on a good day, they transmit a selection of rave music to a sizable following. Unfortunately, it's illegal, and for the past two years they've played an elaborate game of cat and mouse with the council, the police, and the Department of Trade and Industry all determined to close them down. You can ask anyone in Hackney, right, how long they've been waiting for something to get fixed in their house, but they're quite willing to spend a lot of money to get a helicopter out to get two kids off a roof. That's not what I say anyway, you know what I mean? I'm not hurting no one. Now, alarming evidence of the lengths radio pirates have taken to protect their stations. They've turned the tops of London Tower blocks into fortresses. Police and council officials well, made the discovery when they when tried they to break into an apparently in empty council flat in Hackney. In Hackney. In Hackney. In Hackney. In Hackney. In, Hackney, in East London. In Hackney. In Hackney. The council are there to protect their property. In Hackney. In East London. The DTI to protect the radio frequencies and the police to keep the peace. On this occasion, all three joined forces, used a helicopter, and plucked the pirates from the tower block roof at the dead of night. Isn't it like Miami Vice and all that? What are you in? It was a bit hot, for tune. It was a bit hot. Like, it was unnecessary. Once again, the pirates were putting up the aerial the DTI had torn down the week before. Before, before, before. Like a siege or something. Like, yeah, it was like a big, a big siege. They lit up all the place, the light and that. Just to track two kids on the roof. Like three they hours. Down there, yeah, three, three hours, hours to get them down. What they found was a booby-trapped barricade of concrete and razor wire. Phil Bales reports. Once this was a typical high-rise council flat in Hackney. Now it's a pirate's fortress protected by three tons of concrete. Barbed wire fortifications sitting congressly on the roof of the block. The radio flat just below. Extraordinarily, the fence isn't there to keep the police and illegal radio inspectors out. It's the way the pirates get in. They abseil in. Hanging perilously from a rope, the youngsters behind this craze swing their way into the top window. Police are cautious about claims that there's big drugs money behind a network of similar stations across London, aimed at advertising drugs parties. If evidence emerges that that is accurate, then you may be assured that we at Stoke Newington, the police here, are determined to deal in a robust and vigorous way with misuse of drugs. Robust and vigorous way with misuse of drugs. Robust and vigorous way with misuse of drugs. Keep the phone line flexing on the 0860 before I went to 217. Please shout across the town. With the aerial on the roof of the tower block and the transmitter secured behind a concrete barrier in an empty flat, the pirate studio itself moves from location to location to avoid detection by the authorities. As you come, 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 mix, 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 mix down the style. On the crew fire fire, sound with the DJ Mark, alongside the outlook, alongside the man at the gaffer. On the MRC, and it's coming to start. As it makes that side, it comes with it on wire. On the right seat, she, DJ Mark, it's alongside me now. Which is your aerial up there? Well, the two on the, on the right hand side, the two. Two on the scaffold poles. Mm. So you lumbered all that up? Yeah. In the lift, through the roof? Mm. Actually, you had to walk up the stairs. Yeah. You took it up the stairs? Yeah, yeah the pole, because it was too long to get, long to get in a lift. Yeah, what they did is they couldn't get past the padlock to the top hatch, and so they've bent the aluminium cover su sufficiently to be able Squeeze to climb through, through squeeze right. through the gap. Right. Um, and then over here for... Once up here, what they did, 
So it started with scaffold tubes clamped together, two or three, wedged into the top of the waste stack for the block, which brings you straight back to the wrecked toilet. In the exactly, and it causes flat. all kinds of problems with siphonage and back surging for the tenants, and you can imagine 21 stories of waste isn't a pleasant experience. Do you get off on taking on the establishment? Well, do I say, I don't... I it's part, 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 part and parcel, isn't it? Part and parcel. It's I not... don't think it's a buzz or anything doing it. It's just part of the job, man. Yeah. It's always something in your way, isn't it? If you get around it, you can go around it. If you get stopped by it, then you've got to stop and rethink, isn't it? Um, a very common feature of these places is that the, the toilet pan is smashed off in oh. order to drop cables down the soil stack and pick them up as they pass by uh, to bring the cables into the flat to the operating equipment. OK, so we've got a smashed door and a smashed, smashed up tire. Maximum respect reaching out to Donna. Maximum boost going out to the lovely lady like Tara. That's coming from the swim. You know who you are, feeling that vibe. Rolling, rolling, rolling drops. It's the sounds of 19.2 bass. Now let's start to the big stereo. Hi, it's Hello, Flying. We've got that UBR for you on 88.76 megahertz. Um, we think it's in about 189 degrees from here. Yeah. OK then, I right now. Well, this is a transmitter that uh, we seized from the uh, top of a house, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, totally self-contained on this uh, rafter, but uh, as we had to remove the rafter as well, the uh, transmitter came away with it. Well, this is a pirate radio transmitter completely enclosed within this cake tin, and as you can see, it's, uh, it's entirely fitted in this cake tin, but I think this, more than any other example that I've got today, emphasises how crude the pirate radio transmitters can be. And this one, uh, was no way it was going to keep on its frequency and uh, thereby caused interference to other services from within this cake tin, cake tin, cake tin, cake tin. So supposing cake you found, though, that your frequency was, was bleeding into a, an emergency frequency or another radio frequency, what would you do? Get it change frequency. I come, when I first come on here, we was on another pirate radio's frequency in South London. So I just changed the frequency. It's easy. Just go down to the rig doctor and he does it for you. The rig doctor? Yeah, it was. Yes. So What's it. a rig doctor? It's an engineer that builds all the stuff. Top man, top diesel. Now, since the Broadcasting Act of 1990, it can be uh, an unlimited fine or two years in jail. And uh, my staff have got the ability to uh, prosecute those people who run stations, who advertise on stations and who supply stations. And also we've got the ability to uh, seize and uh, gain forfeiture of all the equipment used in pirate stations, including the records and tapes. And uh, that in itself is uh, really uh, quite a strong deterrent for people. No, there ain't one station out there that gives the people what they want. Legal station. Not one legal station. They play the music that we want to play. I don't tune into anything. Like people can phone up and ask for a certain record to be played and we'll play it for them. We'll phone up and give their mate a shout on the other side of London or something like that. And we'll do it for them. Buzz really. So being on air as well. When we're on air and the phone calls is coming. And then you just get a buzz, yeah. Off the street. Uh, when we do you went, know the people that ring in? Do you get to know the people no. before that? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people we start to get to come to our raise. We've got regular, the regular listeners who've all been on from day one since we started. And what's their ring for? Shouts, big us up, big them up, big their mates up. All sorts of things like that. Find yeah. out where raise is happening. What's going, going on, on this weekend, what's happening that weekend. All sorts of things like that. I think there's a vast gulf between the listeners who are average kids listening to particular kinds of music. There's a vast uh, gap between them and the people who are actually organising and making money out of the pirate radio stations. So what you're saying is that there are Mr Biggs behind the stations? I can't speculate on that. I, I don't have any evidence other than to say the lens to which people will go to keep these stations running uh, implies 
uh, th th there is money involved and big money. I mean, all I can say is that I don't think anyone is doing it for the love of music. Uh, and there must be money in it, or, or it, it simply would not be worth their while to go to this extent. It's a load of rubbish. If I was making a load of money, we we'll would be dressed like this. Starters. We wouldn't be living around this area. That's it, we wouldn't even be in this area. Most of us around here, the only thing we've got in Hackney is music. Yeah, everyone in Hackney's talented, but ha no one has got nothing in Hackney. You know what I mean? There's a load of musicians, there's a load of DJs, there's a load of footballers, there's a, there's a load of sportsmen in Hackney, but it's because we don't get a chance to do something. Now we're doing something of our own steam, of our own back. We want to get cut down for it, same we do with big drugs and big corporations. It's all pony. Pony. We have got plans for the estate, we've got plans for a regeneration, um, and we will continue acting like a proper housing authority and a successful housing authority. Uh, and I'm afraid the pirate radio stations are not going to succeed here. See, if they cut that, then what are we going to do? We're going to all be sitting around around the flats again, no one's doing nothing, back to the whole thing, Hackney, crime rate goes up, people get burgled, you know what I mean, people's cars get robbed and people get mugged in a lift. It does happen, I'm not saying that everyone's got turned golden, you know what I mean, but it does happen, but not as much. Before it was people you know who do them sort of things, now it's no one you know. Whatever happens, I've got to still do my radio station. I do it for the public now. When I started it, I started it to do it as a joke. But now it's just a thing where it's gone beyond the joke now. Now like, I've got to, so much listeners. It's the biggest pirate radio station in London. And you're going to stay on air? Of course, sir. You're going to stay on air? Of course, sir. You're going to stay on air? Of course, sir. And you're going to stay on air? Of course, sir. One, two, three, all together! Fire, 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 I love Rush to the max, man. In Hackney, in East London.